And here we go with our sixth and final video in the video series, The Seven Alignment Targets of Analog Optimization. In this video, we'll be talking about stylus rake angle, or SRA. So what is stylus rake angle? It is an angle drawn between the surface of the record and the contact edge of the stylus. Draw a line right through that. Of course, having a rake angle to even measure and talk about assumes that we have that feature on our stylus. If you have a conical stylus, there is no rake angle. A conical stylus simply prevents a spherical shape to the groove, so there is no line contact, as there is with a fine line contact stylus, or a shibata, or a micro line. Many of these names are trade names, and in and of themselves don't necessarily mean a whole lot. But what we're after is one of the more advanced profile styluses that have a contact line rather than present a spherical surface. Elliptical styluses have something approximating a contact line, or let's just say that the surface area is more elongated rather than spherical. So, uh, there, so elliptical styluses do have a rake angle uh, for us to be concerned with. Because of the surface area itself, it doesn't offer the same sensitivity um, between the groove wall and the stylus in terms of being able to transcribe it accurately. And therefore, the rake angle is less sensitive on an elliptoid um, stylus than it would be certainly on a fine line. I often like to create a little helpful visual aid so that I can easily communicate what are the distortion artifacts of being wrong on any one particular mechanical parameter. So I'm going to show you an animation that gives you a very good idea of what it looks like from the stylus and the groove perspective for having the SRA be it something other than what it should be. First, let's talk about the perspective of the animation coming up. So, here's the surface of the record, and we've got a bird's eye view right into the groove. We are going to look at a 45 degree angle to that groove. Here's another way of looking at the animation. This is a close-up view of the groove from a bird's eye perspective. Now, if we change our viewing angle to 45 degrees, we are going to be looking straight down the slope of the wall. Here you can see highlighted, this is the shape that we are now going to look at in the next animation. So at the top of the frame, you see that the stylus contact edge has been properly aligned with the groove wall. And at the bottom is the same groove features, but with the stylus at a significant rake angle error. As the record begins to spin, you'll see at the top that the stylus traces the wall just as you would expect, nice sine wave from the top of the peaks to the bottom of the valleys. But at the bottom, you'll notice that the stylus contact edge is making an abrupt change in direction at the bottom of the valley. And at the top of the hills, it is tabling. Uh, I have put down a black line to show you the path that the stylus is actually taking. Look closely, you'll be able to see that distortion artifact that, that is occurring when rake angle is at an error to the cutting rake uh, due to the fact this mechanical error that you're seeing where there's a very different action of the stylus at the bottom of the undulations versus at the top is a function of this rake angle error. Now this stylus contact edge that's used in this animation is for to make it easy to see we created a straight line, not a major radius like is on, well, all, style, all playback styluses. This will become important to you later in this video why I mentioned that. Now the mechanical distortion that's clearly seen in this animation, it's actually worse than this. There's yet another mechanical distortion that occurs in a horizontally modulating groove when rake error is present. but I'm not good enough with two axis animations in uh, 3D CAD to be able to do this for you. So I figured, well, if I show you one, di one distortion, that'd be quite enough to start getting the idea. But it actually gets worse than this. 
So what is our targeted rake angle? Well, the answer to this question is why I made this video last in the series. The truth is, there's never been any scientific study to answer this question. We don't really know. I will share with you what we do know, but none of it is conclusive enough for us to say that we know what the target is. We have an idea of the range of the target, but the studies on it are virtually non-existent. There was one study done in 1981 in Audio Magazine, the one that's often quoted as being the source of our, our instruction to aim for 92 degrees rake angle. However, that study was not at all scientific. They didn't share their protocol so that it could be subjected to peer review, and they didn't even clearly explain whether 92 degrees was to be measured statically or dynamically. That is, under stylus friction or under a non-moving record. And the reason why that's important is because when a drag force is presented at the stylus, when it's tracing the groove, it changes the angle of the cantilever, which of course changes the VTA and the SRA. I've seen as little as a quarter of a degree difference between static and dynamic and as much as two degrees. So what is it? <laughs> um, it's, it's not clear. Okay, what else do we know since this 1981 study is hardly conclusive for us. Uh, I've talked and spent time with many cutting engineers and they will tell you different things about what their cutting rake is. A number of them told me that they cut at 90 degrees. Some of them told me they cut a few degrees under 90. When I ask any of them how they know what their cutting rake angle is, the answer is some variation of, well, the manual of my cutter head says that if I do this with the, the cutter head angle, then that's what my cutting rake will be. But how do we know? Because, of course, these things are built with tolerances anyway. And furthermore, let's say even if they did know they were cutting at a particular uh, cutting rake angle, well, there is this little thing called lacquer springback that certainly makes a difference with VTA. Well, how does it impact SRA? So if we're cutting at 90, does that mean that after lacquer springback, that our effective rake angle is still 90? Probably not. But I haven't been able to find any evidence that this was studied either. Then perhaps we can look at the IEC standards, which were most recently updated in 2020. <laughs> and I see inconsistency there on, on one paragraph. It sounds like they're telling us that we must have a rake angle between 90 and 95. And then a few pages later, they give a 12 degree variation, which would be anything as little as 86 and as much as 98. That's a 12 degree variation. And by the way, they don't explain whether that's measured dynamically or statically either. I can't find any evidence at all for why these IEC standards even exist, such as they are proclaimed. If any of you see any studies related to this, please forward them to us, because we haven't been able to find them. So when we do the cartridge analyses here, we're happy with anywhere from 90 to 92.5. We're fine with that. At very least, if you take the uh, amalgamation of any of the studies that have been done, that range that we're working with is really tightly in the middle of that range. Though I would not have said this just a few years ago, doing all the work and research that we've done here at the WAM Engineering Laboratories, we've learned a lot. And all of the work done in the field with various uh, clients' systems and you know, we've analyzed several hundred cartridges, done lots of experiments. I am not convinced that stylus rake angle matters as much as we had once thought. And I'll tell you why. Remember, and I went into this on the video, The Microscopic World of Analog, that the stylus has two profiles. The part of the stylus that contacts the groove has two profiles, a minor radius and a major radius. And any time you apply a radius to a flat, a straight line, well, the radius will only contact that line at a single point. 
not an area, but a point. So if we understand that the, the groove wall, let's just imagine an unmodulated groove wall at this point. If the groove wall can be considered to be a straight line, which it is, it's a 45 degree angle, and there is a radius that's in contact with it, that radius will contact only at a point, not a line. Now, of course, that assumes that contact point assumes that the, the groove wall is infinitely rigid. Well, it's not. It's got some compliance to it. But the degree to which that that point can then become a line surface uh, or a line, a line surface contact area is highly variable. It will depend upon how much will the groove wall deflect, which is a function of how much plasticizers are in this particular record. The more plasticizers, the more easily it deforms. What's the VTF? The higher the VTF, the more the record surface will deform. What's the major radius? The bigger the radius, the less it will deform. The tighter the radius, the more it will deform. The minor radius, same thing. Uh, there's, there's quite a number of variables that are going to go into answering the question, how much of that point becomes seen by the record groove surface as a line contact area? This question hasn't been answered. So we can easily infer then that the lower your VTF, the less stylus rake angle will even matter. If you've got some of those excellent new UHQR records that are clear, these records have no plasticizers in them. They're, I believe, 100% PVC and they're very rigid. Well, rigid items aren't going to deflect as much. So on a record like that, stylus rake angle is going to matter less. I haven't named the only variables that would go into determining whether and how much rake angle would even matter. But this is all under question now. And uh, I know that WAM engineering has been part of the voice, voice um, in the past articulating for controlling your stylus rake angle. And while we will continue to do that, we have to acknowledge that we don't actually truly know. One, What's our target? And two, how much does it matter? Because remember, we can't change SRA without changing VTA, right? They're a locked relationship. So we're going to have to do the work here at WAM Engineering to answer the question, how should we weigh those two variables? In other words, how much, how much more would VTA matter than SRA? Because we should be able to quantify these things and provide a weighting that would instruct us um, much better in determining how to balance these two interests that you have to change in lockstep with each other but can be competing with each other. I've seen multiple examples in the laboratory where the rake angle was let's say 88 degrees and the VTA was up at 25. Well I want to get the VTA down but at 88 degrees SRA, I don't feel the freedom to do that. So, I'm sorry, I'm disappointed. Perhaps many of you are dis disappointed as well, but um, this is research that we will definitely get into when we have concluded the projects that we're currently on. Of course, when that happens, this video will certainly be updated. So how to measure stylus rake angle? Definitely got to use microscopy for that. That's why we developed the Wally scope. Um, and even if you don't own a Wally scope, but you want to be able to do it with, let's say you've got a USB microscope, uh, the images won't be as good or as well controlled, but um, if you just download the, the instructions on the Wally scope, there'll be a lot of helpful hints in there for you to, to make sure that your angles are correct so that you don't introduce measurement error. As many of you may know, uh, one of the services that keeps us most busy here at WAM Engineering is the cartridge analysis service. And besides measuring, of course, uh, your cartridges, Zenith error, VTA, SRA, and azimuth angle, um, we document all of the results from all of the cartridges, several hundred cartridges by now that we've seen. And we know that the average stylus rake angle error uh, from 92 degrees dynamic as our target is 3.2 degrees. That's quite a lot. 
uh, more than any tone arm that I know of would allow you to adjust for. Tone arms are usually only offer plus minus a degree and a half. But I'll say it again just like I did in the video on VTA. Do not use your tone arm height adjustment to listen for changes to VTA and SRA. What you are hearing when you raise and lower that tone arm are changing vector forces, multiple vector forces. And again, we'll do a video on this in the future you are not hearing the change in SRA and VTA. Those are being flooded by the, uh, by the distortion characteristics that changing vector forces throw off. The way you change your SRA and VTA is at the head shell with a wedge. We've got Wally shims. You can order from us at any, any angle you like, but uh, if, even if you don't want to use those, find your own way to shim your cartridge and listen. In most cases, you're going to need to get, again, get that butt down uh, to hear your cartridge's um, ideal angles. So what is the sound of SRA being wrong? Well, we don't know <laughs> because we can't change SRA independently from VTA. We do know that when we optimize for VTA, and if we're exclusively focusing on that um, parameter, we hear additional clarity. That's the main thing coming through. Additional clarity, better, better transient attack, and better separation of instruments. And also, the music is just, it sounds more like music and less like electronic uh, artifact. Um, just, it's much more convincing and relaxing and real. But is that because the VTA is being corrected? And or the SRA? On balance, which is more important? We don't know. Not yet. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us and enjoy Analog Forever.